Hello, and thank you for listening to this Analyst Insight podcast from the Information Security Forum. Welcome back if you are a regular. I hope we are managing to keep you entertained. If you are a newbie, consider yourself very welcome to the podcast. My name is Esther Schrager van Leid, and I will be today's moderator in the special edition of the ISF Analyst Insight podcast. I've been in the cybersecurity industry for 10 years with a career in cybersecurity consulting and as the CISO of a big four. This is a special episode in honor of International Women's Day. While many women in cyber events and talks focus on starting in cyber, we are going to talk about remaining in cyber. How do you stay in love with the field? How do you continue learning? And how do you grow through the ranks? On today's podcast, we've brought together inspiring women from the ISFT. Our guests are as follows. Francesca, who joined the ISF in 2021 as part of the Tools and Methodologies team. She's the product owner for the Benchmark and Supplier Security Tools, which are the ISS security assessment platforms. Francesca, say hello to the crowd. Hi, everyone. Then we've got Huey. Huey is a senior analyst in ISF Tools and Methodologies team, focusing on risk management tools and the ISF ISMS manager. She previously worked in the oil and gas industry. Hi, Esther. Thank you for having me on this podcast. And lastly, we're joined by Shreya, who works as a Zero Trust product lead and consultant at the ISF. Prior to joining the ISF, she worked with KPMG in their risk and digital transformation practice. Hi, Esther. Hi, everyone else. It's lovely to be a part of this podcast. Great. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so let's get us started on the first question. And it's a very important question for those looking to get into cybersecurity and, of course, stay in cybersecurity. What do you love so much about working in cybersecurity? Maybe you want to kick us off the way. Yeah, sure. I think um, the most important element is really the people that I'm going to meet and work with on a daily basis. So I find it's very fascinating in the cybersecurity industry because you do see people, um, all these professionals, experts coming from different backgrounds. Someone can come from the IT, uh, like technology background, compliance, governance, risk assessment, or even engineering that we have seen um, all these engineers uh, from different fields so so that is very fascinating how to interact with them how to learn learn with them and of course within the ISF we talk to like different uh, organizations so so I think that I've been seeing new things every day and that is what really excites me actually working in this industry. Shreya what do you think? Yeah I think I totally agree with you Hui, but I uh, the, the thing that really got me into the industry uh, was that it's a gold mine of opportunities And I also think that a career in cyber is like future proof. Uh, There's so many opportunities. There's nothing that you will will run out of. And uh, that's something that I really love. Apart from that, there's always new challenges coming up, especially as a part of uh, the delivery side of things. So um, and I think we always see that at the ISF. It's, It's a challenging job, but it's also really fun. For me, I think it's that every day is an opportunity to be a new day of learning. It's a field which is always going to be growing and changing and evolving over time. There's always something new for you to dig your heels into and find out more about. Or like Quay said, talk to other people in the industry. There's such a broad range of topics to cover. that There's always something else for you to learn. Great. Yeah, for me, it's been the fact that um, working in cybersecurity is something that we do um, with a great benefit to society. So, of course, we work um, for our clients, our ISF members, we contribute to society and keeping her safe. Uh, so I think that is a great part. It makes me feel like a superhero every single day. And I find that a very rewarding bit of the role that I do. And so all of us have been in the cybersecurity industry for a little while now. What are some accomplishments that you are most proud of in your career? For me, it's um, that I've become the CISO of a big four organization while I was at 30. I'm not sure that's the youngest CISO ever for such a large organization. But for me, it felt like a significant milestone so early in my career. And I was so proud to be part of a household name that my family knew, uh, that, that people around me knew. And I could say, I'm CISO for that company. And I have a significant role in protecting the thousands of people that work for that organization. That's definitely very exciting, Esther. I'm sure you're like a role model for a lot of people, including me. Um, um, For me, it would definitely be uh, developing and owning a cybersecurity product and leading its delivery at 25 years of age. Um, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would get an opportunity to do something like this. And I think that would be my biggest accomplishment. Um, And I know that Francesca is also like uh, uh, like one of the uh, younger uh, 
uh, colleagues that I have, and I'm I'm really really inspired by her as well. Uh, Francesca, would you like to share what you've been up to? Uh, thank you, Shreya. I feel the same uh, towards you and everyone else on this call. Uh, similar to Shreya, I think the moment I'm most proud of is launching the supplier security tool at the Congress we had last year. Uh, for me, it was the first big project I was involved in, and it was really cool to see it turn from an ideas in the planning stage to go on that journey for it to be a really impressive product at launch, and I'm still quite proud of that. Yeah, for me, I think um, maybe my accomplishment is smaller compared to every every other girls on the podcast. I think uh, because I do, I, I did switch my career actually to information security when I was 35. So, so I took time that time and the study the system um, after work and uh, passed the certification on the first attempt was uh, actually my first accomplishment in the cyber industry that I'm really proud of myself. And I think that's immediately also a great lesson for the audience. Um, we do see that our younger generation in the industry uh, has had the opportunity to sometimes do uh, computer science education, cybersecurity education, but those cybersecurity educations weren't around a long time ago. So for those of us who are a little bit older, um, they've come in without that education and may have done something completely different. And that's also what I want the audience to take away. If they're not currently working in cyber, it's never too late to switch your career in cyber. There's many women in the industry currently who are a little bit older who have switched from a completely different field into this field and are very very successful there's lots of opportunities to improve on your knowledge and skills do a lot of training once you get into the industry Um, so just uh, a hint to everybody who wants to get in but isn't in yet and is working in something completely different there's many of us who have been in the same boat and have made a successful transition the next on i wanted to ask you a question about maybe the people who inspired you to get into this industry do you have any role models within the cybersecurity industry shreya Oh, I I think my role models are not limited to the industry that I am part of. Uh, I think that I struggle because cyber has only 20% women across the world. And I think it's growing, but we're, we still need to bridge that gap. We have to come a long way. Uh, however, women leaders of color, although there's not as many as I would like there to be, inspire me. Uh, and my biggest inspiration uh, till date, I think I was 19 years old when I read about Indra Nui. And she's one of the sparkling examples of a boss woman. She's a mother. She's She was an ex-CISO. And now she's a board member of the biggest tech companies out there. And I really look up to her. And I and I hope that I can be at least like 5 or 10% of what she is throughout my career. Yeah, actually, I do have one um, uh, role model in the cybersecurity industry after I joined this um, industry. And I hope this lady wouldn't mind me uh, mentioning her name. So uh, she is actually our previous uh, operations director, Elle. Um, She was really my first role model. As I mentioned, she has been a tremendous source of inspiration for me. Um, What's remarkable about her is not just her impressive position as uh, like leader, uh, director level um, as a young lady, but also her leadership style and openness. Like despite being in a high pressure role, she always makes time for her team and encourage open communication. And I can recall so many times that we had really good interactions and laugh about things together as well. So seeing her navigating challenges with grace and confidence has really taught me um, invaluable lessons about resilience and leadership. I have to agree with uh, Hui on that point. Um, The ISF was my first role out of university and Elle was my first director. And it has been a really, really good starting point for my career to have someone like Elle in an early job, in an early position to look up to and inspire to be. I also agree. Female role models are very important as they show us that we can also reach that place. So having a female role model in your industry and thinking you might be that person one day is very, very important. When I got into the cybersecurity industry, I attended the hacking conference uh, before I joined the industry, actually. And there were eight female keynote speakers on stage, uh, very famous CISOs that really had a great story. And I thought, I want to be one of those women uh, when I grow up. Um, so that was actually my pivoting point for joining the industry, seeing those women on stage. So very, very important. Um, I've been in the industry for uh, 10 years now, and I've now had the chance to also meet some of them in real life uh, or we've even spoken on stage together um, so that's been quite interesting meeting your role models um, and in some cases they weren't 
the shining sparkly figure I imagine them to be. But that's like with anyone you idolize. It's when you admire somebody as a role model, you tend to overlook any flaws that they have and the complete person that they are. So I think the benefit of that, of course, is that it makes you also realize you don't have to be that shiny, sparkly person all the time. You can be a complete person with your flaws. Um, so and bring your full self to cybersecurity as I think that's really important for longevity in any industry and role is to be able to be your full self. Just realize that you don't need to be as perfect as your role model seems to be on stage. Okay, ladies. And can you share a moment when you felt empowered as a woman in cyber? Maybe I can start. Um, I would think for myself, yeah, um, one empower, empowering moment uh, in my journey is really when I'm being trusted to lead a new project at work, especially it was only my first year or second year at work. Um, it definitely, I feel that recognized about my expertise and the leadership capabilities, regardless of the gender. So throughout the project, of course, like, we would face challenges um, and difficulties. I feel the full support from my team and other, um, basically from the ISF global team as well. And this experience really highlights that gender should never hinder one's ability to succeed and make an impact in cybersecurity or any field. Um, actually, I think, Francesca, you just successfully delivered a project not too long ago. W- would you agree on that? Yeah, 100%. That definitely made me feel empowered being part of that experience. But the more significant thing there is the support we get from our team. Everyone in the ISF is so supportive of you taking on these leadership roles. And it's the fact that they can put the trust into you to work hard and deliver what they're expecting to, I think, is a very empowering feeling. Great. I always feel empowered when I'm speaking on stage. Um, I dress up and I do my makeup nicely and I tell my story. Uh, and I just feel that when I'm in the spotlights like that, I need to bring my whole self in order to bring the audience would be my story. So that's also why I love go speaking in public um, and sharing that story because I really feel it brings out the best version of me. I think I agree with you on that one, Esther. Uh, so I starting out, I never really had the opportunity to speak on stage, especially about something I was extremely passionate about. Uh, I guess I've discovered recently that I'm my best self when I'm speaking to an audience about cybersecurity, primarily because I'm really passionate about it. And I also feel really empowered when I'm working on a project where I can make a difference. So if it's something that changes the security landscape of an organization, I feel uh, really empowered that way. Super. Thank you, ladies. Um, And apart from having spoken about the forum uh, in which we enter the industry and we're working in the industry, it's good to look at the content of what's happening in this very exciting field. What advancements or breakthroughs in the industry excite you most for the future? For me personally, I am still very excited about AI and cybersecurity beyond the hype of generative AI, which I realize is a lot of talk uh, about currently. Um, But I wrote my master's thesis on AI and cybersecurity in 2017. And although the progress on quality of AI capabilities might not be as fast as I'd like, contrary to what um, is currently happening in Gen AI and might lead you to believe, um, I'm very interested in seeing a world where we have automated intelligent cyber attack and defense. So no matter how scary that might sound, uh, I think there's tremendous potential for AI to uh, really elevate that to the next level for both the attacking side and defensive side uh, and seeing how those combat each other. Uh, It seems a little bit of a futuristic scenario, which we might be quite far removed from currently. um, But I think that is something that AI might really change in our industry. Um, How about you, Shreya? Uh, I feel it's really interesting how far AI has come. Uh, Only yesterday I was looking at this, uh, uh, I think these images about where AI generated images where uh, I think last year it was not very, uh, you know, it was not very real. And this year we've we've had so many AI generated images that feel exactly the same to what's happening in the real world. Uh, So easy to like fake it. Uh, So yeah, the cyber landscape is ever evolving and it's, uh, and that makes me like really excited. Uh, I like to read a lot about the advancements. Um, sometimes it takes only a few months uh, for these advancements to take shape and actually be out there. Uh, the only change that has been gradual here, ironically, is the representation of women in cyber, specifically uh, women representation in leadership roles in cyber. And I'm really excited to see whether this could be a potential breakthrough in the following years. 
Yeah, I think Esther and Shreya just talked about from the uh, technology perspective, and I and I do want to focus on the people perspective as well. And personally, I'm really excited about the influx of new generation infosec practitioners and uh, potential future leaders entering the cybersecurity field. It's really inspiring to witness the uh, fresh perspectives and innovative approaches that br- they bring. And also, I, I think like people with from ge- different generations, they are different, like how they perceive information, etc. And we do need to explore the diverse uh, strategies and attract and retain the next generation talents in the cyber world as well. So maybe we can um, emphasis on inc- inclusivity, uh, mentorship and hands-on experiences, which can help neutral their interest and commitment to the field, ensuring a vibrant and dynamic future of cybersecurity. I completely agree with that, Huang. I think we see a lot of um, women in the junior layers of the cybersecurity industry, uh, but not that much in leadership yet, uh, which is, of course, a pipeline issue. I mean, uh, we could assume that once the years go by, these junior women will end up in senior roles. Um, But in order to do so, it's very important that we keep them in the industry uh, and not have them um, break off at some point, go somewhere else, try a different career. Uh, But we keep them with us in the industry and keep them entertained and interested for that while until they reach the senior leadership positions. I hope that our audience that is listening also gets to uh, like have some inspiration on staying in the cyber industry as we're trying to have that uh, pointed out as well. So hopefully everyone who's listening uh, knows that the benefits of staying in the cyber industry is leading uh, leading a whole practice of uh, cybersecurity in the near future. Okay. And so apart from staying up to date in um, by reading the ICEF research, of course, are there any books, for instance, by female writers or podcasts in cybersecurity that you'd like to recommend to our audience? Um, for me, an absolute recommendation I would do is the book by Jane Franklin called Insecurity, Why a Failure to Attract and Retain Women in Cybersecurity is Making Us All Less Safe. Uh, I think Jane has done wonderful work in the industry for women and getting attention uh, to uh, our needs and the importance of having more women in the industry. So this book is a great place to start for anybody interested in the current state of that. I would also recommend the IC Squared publication. They do a frequent report on the state of women in cybersecurity from a workforce perspective. Um, So go and look that up if you're interested in the numbers and seeing how that progresses over the years. Francesca, may I hand over to you? Sure. Uh, So for me, I don't have a security focus book as such, but one I'd like to give a shout out to is How to Own the Room by Viv Groskop. It's a really useful um, resource in terms of helping you to find your own voice and it gives really useful tips for how to speak up more in meetings or in conferences or I guess even on this podcast. And it's a book I find myself revisiting from time to time just to get my confidence back up and to contribute fully in my work. I'm definitely going to go and read that, Francesca, because sometimes we all need a push. Um, Thanks for that recommendation. Uh, I think for me, there's a few books by female writers that I've read recently, but they were not necessarily related to cybersecurity. Uh, But I'd really like to share with the audience uh, a few women-centric podcasts that I am hooked to. Uh, There is one particularly that I really enjoy, and it's it's called Women at Work by Harvard Business Review. It's exceptionally good for the content that they produce. Uh, They've got loads of uh, women in cyber. They've got loads of tips and tricks of how to dealing with a career in cyber. And I I do find myself uh, going back and listening to uh, certain episodes uh, more, more than the others. One other podcast that I kind of listen to a lot is the McKinsey podcast, and they they do have a few sections that are dedicated to women. And there's one particular uh, recommendation that I have, and it's an episode that is called What You Need to Know About Women at Work. And I think that's quite inspiring and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I think what what Shreya mentioned is very interesting about the podcast because definitely it's a newer version of the media, right? But if we go back to the books, I sometimes can be a bit cheesy. I always go for the uh, top 10 on the, uh, let's say, Amazon list. And it was a book that I read a few years ago. It was The Presence, Bringing Your Boldest Self to Your Biggest Challenges by Amy Cuddy. And it really uh, explore, explores the concept of presence, like how individuals can harness their inner strengths to navigate challenges situation and to present themselves um, 
and being confident. So I I actually used it as a handbook because there are some like e- exercise that you can do to be actually less self aware. And more confident in front of the public, and sometimes, yeah, I go back from from time to time and and just to um, help myself in difficulty, uh, like in difficult situations, like just before a, a presentation that I need to do in front of two hundred people. That really helps me a lot. Great, thank you so much. Um, these are our recommendations, but I guess here's a call to the audience. If you've got any great recommendations, books, podcasts, or other types of media around women in cyber, uh, working in cybersecurity or women at work, please don't hesitate to share those with us on our social media channels. And sometimes we need a little bit of guidance in terms of uh, getting people to encourage us, make room for us in our next roles. Uh, what role does mentorship play in empowering the next generation of women in the industry, you think? I think mentorship is hugely important, not just for cybersecurity, but any industry you're in, especially when you're uh, earlier on into your career and maybe if you are not in the majority. So if you're a woman or a person of color, I think having mentorship you can have around you is a really, really important mechanism to furthering your career and making you think further ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think personally, mentors are great for when we are looking to grow or we're just stuck in a rut. Um, But as far as I'm concerned, the real gold is to be found in sponsors who advocate for you in the room when you aren't present. Um, So for instance, when we're talking about getting that promotion, being nominated to lead that important project, you need somebody on your side who says, listen, I think Shreya should be doing this. Um, So I feel they can play a vital role in advancing women's career, regardless of whether they are men or women. And actually, I find that men are a little bit more comfortable uh, sometimes pushing somebody forward in that way. Um, So do go and find yourself a sponsor next to having a mentor and a coach. Uh, On that note, thanks for that, Esther. But on that note, I would like to share a personal experience uh, that I had when I was just starting out in my career. I had a a female colleague who was a very close friend of mine who hesitated to support me on uh, one of the meetings that we were at. And I later found out about it that when I'd left the room, she wasn't uh, quite happy with uh, me taking on a project. And I think that things like these um, don't happen quite a lot. But then... uh, I also think that it's really important to highlight that women power and women for women is something that we always uh, propagate at the ISF. And I think that that kind of culture should only uh, spread out and we should have more women for women. And that's when the, the community comes together very holistically. Yeah, I think maybe to touch upon that as well, it's important to note. So what Shreya is saying with uh, another woman, uh, another woman trying to subtract from her, it's very important that we realize it's not a zero sum game, right? We are, it's not because one woman is making it to the top, others can't. So I really want to kind of push this concept of sisterhood, uh, defending each other's interests and trying to grow together uh, rather than saying, well, I, I want to make it and therefore I can't be supporting you. I think it's important that we grow together uh, and get the support from the people around us to do so. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely agree with what has been said already. And I think as women, uh, one of our advantages is really about sharing and uh, basically providing this kind of mental support. So that's why I think as a mentor, it is very critical actually for us to share um our own journeys and our own stories. So it might not provide the direction where um, where you want to go, but it does provide the mental support uh, when understanding that both of you might share the same issues or the difficulties. So basically you can hold your hands together and you can conquer all these difficulties together. And of course, connecting with other people in our community is very, very important for us to grow as human beings. Are there any networks or events you would like to recommend to other women in the industry to join? Shreya, maybe I can start with you. Um, I think in the UK, uh, Women in Cyber is a very well-connected network. Um, There is a good mix of women in leadership and there's also exposure for women who are just starting out. They also do a lot of uh, collaborations with universities. So anyone who's a university student and looking to join Women in Cyber, that's a great start. When I went to Warwick, um, I was a part of Women in Cyber and and I did get a lot out of that network and community. So yeah, that's, that's my personal experience. So for any ladies who's seeking for any like technical training, um, actually, yeah, I was doing some kind of research um, for myself as well. Of course, there are loads of uh, like videos and like training materials on YouTube that you can find. But also I, I 
and understood that there are a lot of uh, organizations, societies that they are focusing on girls, especially with the coding. So just to mention two names here, like Code First Girls and Girls Who Code. Actually, it's quite quite similar name, but but what they are doing is impressive, and sometimes you just think it's it's too good to be to be true, actually. Um, also, in terms of the membership, um, I'm personally with Asaka, and they do offer sessions and discussions on diversities and other useful topics. Like probably like two months ago, I attended a session which is about like storytelling. So, so it is quite interesting um, to enhance your softer skills as well. Great, thank you. What you might not know is that I'm based in the Netherlands. But what I did want to recommend is the Women in Tech events, and they have chapters across Europe. Um, I find them very valuable. So this is not per se people in cyber. It's much wider across IT. But I find that rather valuable because meeting women from other IT disciplines, you find that they have slightly different problems, maybe a slightly different language. Uh, But there's a lot that we can learn from each other. Um, And so I think expanding your network outside of cyber can be very, very rewarding and definitely recommend um, going to some of their quite professionally organized events. I have to agree with what you've all said. There's lots of value in the women in tech and women in cyber networks. I think it's equally important to encourage women to still go along to the mainstream events. So whether it be an ISF chapter event or the ISF World Congress or any other event within the community, I think it's really important to get women in those spaces and make them feel comfortable and confident uh, being in those spaces too. Yeah, and especially we wouldn't want the uh, women events to be the only place where women are and then not have any women at the mainstream events. That would not really help perception. Uh, I think adding on to networks and events rather than just attending as well, what we mentioned before about role models, it's that it's so very important to also see women on stage, see that women are experts in the field, that they've got a story to bring. So I know this might be a little bit daunting if you're just starting out in the field or you're just considering yourself an introvert, um, but getting on stage and telling your story and showing up your expertise as the woman in cyber can be not rewarding just for yourself, like me and Shreya demonstrated in terms of bringing our best version of ourselves, uh, but also very rewarding in terms of inspiring the next generation uh, of leaders to either enter the cybersecurity industry, like I mentioned with my hacking conference, or be proud as a woman in cyber and feel inspired to do something like that themselves the next time a conference comes around. Uh, I'd just like to quickly add on that note that, that I, I, I learned something while uh, working at the ISF as part of my career is ask and you shall get. And that's just something that I stand by. And I think it's really important for women, not just women, but anyone who is starting out in a a career in cyber or a career anywhere else for that matter, that if you ask for opportunities, they will definitely come your way. And with that, we've come to the final question of this podcast edition. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends, tell your colleagues. You can now find Eyes of Podcasts on all major podcast platforms. Look for our page at Audioboom where you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode. The podcasts are also available at securityforum.org where you can also learn more about ISAF research tools and guidance. Next time, Mark Ward will be back with you as your regular host. If you enjoyed the special edition of the ISAF Analyst Inside podcast on women in cyber, do let us know on social media. Thank you and until next time.